My name is Alyssa Sines. My name is Jonathan Tipo. And we are the co-directors of the peer-led team learning ambassador program at the University of Texas at El Paso in the United States. The PLTL ambassador program is a student-led initiative that implements peer-led team learning, otherwise known as PLTL techniques and values into early college high school programs in our city. However, before we are able to talk about our program, we need to give some background information into what the early college system is. The typical United States education system is split into two separate parts. There is the K-12 system and the college system. The K-12 system hosts children from ages 5 to 18. This system is split into three levels, which include elementary school, typically kindergarten through fifth grade, middle school, typically sixth through eighth grade, and high school, which is typically ninth through twelfth grade. Here, there is a focus on in-classroom learning and a general education is taught. Each student is required to take four core subjects each year. These core subjects include math, science, English, and social studies. Additionally, a student can take electives to help find their interests and possible career paths. Now, let's talk about the American Collegiate System, sometimes referred to as the Higher Education or Post-Secondary Education System. Now, this is really just encompassing everything that comes after high school. Now, in terms of the University of Texas at El Paso, sometimes called UTEP, most high school graduate students will funnel into what is called the undergraduate program. Now this is a four year or 120 credit hour program. Now the first two years at UTEP is all general education. There is some flexibility between different majors, but most students will be taking a similar course load to one another. This is where students will be taking their introductory and core classes. Certain institutions may award an associate's degree when the student has reached 60 credit hours or the first two years at UTEP. Now the last two years at UTEP is where students will establish their major and will work toward advanced and targeted courses. Now after 120 applicable college credit hours have been reached, the student will have received their bachelor's degree and be considered graduated. We'd now like to introduce the early college program. The early college program takes the high school section of the K-12 system and integrates the general education section of the college system into it. As a result, early college students are able to take college level courses that work toward earning an undergraduate degree. At the end of the program, if the students are successful in reaching 60 college credit hours on or before their high school graduation date, they are awarded a high school diploma and an associate's degree simultaneously. Now, the Early College Program is a program that is publicly funded and incorporated within our K-12 school districts. It is a program that is offered at no extra cost to the student or their family, and it works in tandem with our local community college to provide students access to the college-level courses that will take alongside their high school-level classes. Now, this saves a student both time and money. However, I do want to stress that this is a very intense and rigorous program that is not like typical high schools. Our local early college programs work in conjunction with the University of Texas at El Paso and the El Paso Community College to help students earn their college credits and then to further transfer into the university level courses. There is even a special scholarship that allows early college students to take courses during their senior year if they reach 60 credit hours by the time they are juniors in the early college high school. The best part of this program is that the early college students now have full access to both the early college and university resources. One of the remarkable university resources is the peer-led team learning program that has been successfully maintained for over 20 years within the general chemistry courses for undergraduate students. PLTL is a remarkable program that facilitates the learning of students by their peers through workshops integrated in the course. Peer leaders are undergraduate students who have done well in the course prior to. They are thoroughly trained, supervised by faculty, and are responsible for their own workshop, consisting of 8 to 14 students, meeting once a week for two hours. This is where they help current students in the course understand, practice, and master the challenging topics taught in the course lecture. Now, Alyssa and I are both general chemistry peer leaders at the University of Texas at El Paso. We also graduated from Northwest Early College High School in El Paso, Texas. 
Our experience with both programs have been incredibly beneficial, and we can truly say that we have experienced the best of both worlds. Because by the time we earned our 60 college credit hours, we are just around 16 or 17 years old, and just third years at our local high school. Now with that in mind, when we first enrolled at UTEP as full-time students, we were already classified as juniors in college, all because of our participation in the early college program. Although there are high academic achievements associated with the early college program, it is rigorous and demanding. I felt very comfortable handling change and obstacles given my experience at the early college. But once I attended UTEP, I felt there was a drastic lack of preparation for the upper division university coursework. I had completed a rigorous high school program and graduated at the top of my class with distinct honors. I had taken many college courses throughout my high school experience, and given that some of the courses were not extremely challenging to me, it created a sense of complacency with the high academic achievements I had earned. However, once I graduated and took UTEP courses, I felt as if everything hit me at once, and it was very overwhelming to keep up. Now, Alyssa and I have almost identical testimonies. So instead, I want to share my friend's story. Meet my good friend Andrew. Andrew earned high B's and low A's in all of his high school classes, he even had a 3.5 GPA in his college courses. He had hopes of becoming a high school English teacher one day. And he was an active member in many extracurricular clubs, such as the school's quiz bowl team, science bowl team, the school's writing society, and even helped make the yearbook. And by no means was he a terrible student. However, this all changed when we entered college, because after just one semester in college, he dropped out with a total GPA of a 1.75. Now, meet my other friend, meet Terry. Terry was an amazing student, even considering the early college setting. He had an overall GPA of a 4.0 and has not once gotten a B in any of his high school classes. He was ranked 10th in our high school class and was even captain of our Northwest Q team, part of the coding club, president of the medical club. He helped start the robotics club, was part of the National Honor Society, and even the student council. Many teachers pointed to him as a prime example of a Northwest success. Now, Terry also failed every first exam in his UTEP courses. This isn't a rare story. Many early college students fall victim to what we call the university gate. After reaching their 60 credits at the community college, many students struggle to find success when entering university. Our previous administration informed us as students that more work must be put in to succeed in these UTEP courses. She would mention that there have been as low as a 40% pass rate in the university level courses. After reflecting on our own experiences, as well as receiving feedback from our fellow graduates who are attending a variety of universities across the U.S., we've identified five main difficulties when adjusting to the university level coursework. The first key struggle would be not having efficient and adept studying skills. Now, in high school, it was possible to pass a class without really understanding the material. However, in college settings, this is not possible. It takes more to actually learn and to grasp the concepts instead of just passively reading material in a textbook or passively listening in on a lecture. Many early college students did not realize this fast enough and could not adjust when they needed the skills the most. The second key struggle was being able to effectively time manage academic and personal activities. Being a college student is extremely time consuming compared to a high school student. Many early college students are not used to the amount of time necessary to dedicate to academic studying in order to succeed in the course. It creates an unhealthy balance where too much focus is placed on academics or not enough. Now the third key struggle is being aware of all the resources available to students. Having earned college credit prior to attending a university, many early college students take upper division courses since they already have earned the credit for the lower division ones. When early college students are enrolled in upper division courses, many professors assume that they have been attending the university for quite some time. So the students should already know what is offered to them such as workshop times, tutoring times, and even office hours. However, this is not the case for each and every early college student. The fourth key struggle is having a sense of complacency. Because students are used to the early college program, they get comfortable when dealing with higher education. 
This should not be the case. These students develop a habit of relaxation and procrastination that may have been acceptable for the early college program, but definitely is not acceptable for university curriculum. Now, the fifth and final struggle would be the lack of an adjustment period. The way that the U.S. college education system is set up allows for a two-year adjustment period with a general education program. Now, students are able to learn the essential study skills needed in a university during this time and are able to adjust from the high school format. Now, because the early college students do not have this adjustment period, they are immediately expected to be able to handle the upper division coursework. This diagram highlights our expectations when entering the university. It's the confidence in our ability versus the actual difficulty of the program. We can see how overinflated our confidence was and the spike in difficulty shocked us. It is at this point where most students either become discouraged or lose motivation. Fortunately for us, we had a workshop and a peer leader to help lower this massive hurdle. During our first semester as general chemistry peer leaders, Jonathan and I knew that this program was one that can help bridge that gap of preparation for early college students. We planned and established the peer-led team learning ambassador program, which is targeted to bring the PLTL program from the UTEP chemistry department to our local early college high schools here in El Paso, Texas. Our goal is to immerse ourselves into the chemistry course at Northwest Early College High School and work with the students from there. Here, we will not only be assisting these students with chemistry, but teaching them the necessary time management and study skills as well. We chose this chemistry program specifically for several reasons. First, as general chemistry peer leaders, we are trained and knowledgeable with the material that is taught. Secondly, the skills needed to do well in chemistry is not limited to the STEM world. Critical thinking, comprehension, math and study skills, and memorizing are just some of the necessary components needed to be successful in all types of courses. We're starting this pilot program at our own high school, Northwest Early College High School, found within the Canotillo Independent School District. The administration at Northwest and the faculty at UTEP are very supportive of our program and are certain that this will help early college students become more prepared and equipped to transition into higher education environments. Now, workshop is our method of delivery. These workshops represent the six principles of the PLTL program. Principle one, workshop is integral to the course. By requiring students to participate in workshops, all sorts of students would be forced to interact with one another. Workshops are comprised of the A, students and the students taking the course for the third time and everything in between. Now this creates unique group dynamics and brings out ways of viewing concepts that may be new to all students. Principle two, the instructor is involved. Coordinating with the instructor allows for a preview then review methodology. This is where the students would preview material beforehand and learn during workshop. Workshops is where they can fine tune their understanding to what the professor will test them on. This provides a natural sense of direction and displays a sense of cohesion between the peer leader and the professor. The peer leader professor cohesion is key in building a relationship in which the student trusts you. Principle number three, peer leaders are selected, trained and supervised in order to be skilled in group work as facilitators. Now, imagine that a workshop is like a cake. Each student adds its own layer and flavor to this cake, but what really should bind the workshop together should be the peer leader. In this case, the peer leader acts like the frosting. It shouldn't be overbearing in order to mask each individual flavor of the cake, but it should be strong enough in order to keep a cohesive entity. Now, in order to accomplish this, a peer leader must be chosen to have a special mindset and maintain this mindset throughout the semester. This is only done through our selection, evaluation, and training process. Principle four, workshop material is challenging and directly related to methods of assessment. Because the intention of workshop is to foster active learning, students must be constantly engaged in order to reap the full benefits of this program. 
by presenting appropriately challenging material, the risk of losing students to boredom or frustration is diminished. Principle number five. Workshops are scheduled once a week for two hours and contain groups of six to eight students. Now, workshops are intentionally designed to be small. A small group of students decreases the chance of emulating the passive learning style that lectures can sometimes encourage. This is how workshops are set up. Again, it is two hours a week with multiple small groups. Principle number six. The PLTL program is supported by the department and the institution. Without institutional support, the program would not go far. The institution supports this program by providing the university label, providing the wages, and making us an official part of the curriculum. We are incredibly grateful for all the support that we have received in pursuing this program. Special thanks to the Northwest Administration, the UTEP faculty and staff, and the El Paso Community College who have all been influential and incredibly helpful. The PLTL Ambassador Program is tailored towards combating the lack of preparation and understanding for high school students who may not know what to expect from the university coursework. We have created a program that we would have appreciated back when we were early college students. We understand how fortunate we are to be able to receive an education and how powerful this tool is. We're motivated to make a difference so that more people do not waste this opportunity given to them. Hopefully, with our help, our students are encouraged to continue their academic journey and achieve their goals.